the Star Trek scene that almost ended it all. On September 8, 1966, the great Gene Roddenberry unveiled the highly popular Star Trek television series to the world. Star Trek was able to secure a foothold in the sci-fi cosmos via a protracted labyrinth of shifting conceptions, low budgets, new hires, and simpler, intellectually intriguing narratives. The cast and crew would all get to know each other exceptionally well, for better or worse, thanks to the iconic William Shatner as Captain Kirk of the USS Enterprise. It should come as no surprise that there were numerous noteworthy Star Trek controversies, given that the show's creator, together with the cast and crew, were mainly building a totally new television environment. These Star Trek controversies speak for themselves, from small gossip and misunderstandings to acts of sexism and bigotry. These Star Trek controversies will enthrall you, whether you were old enough to see the original production when it first aired or became a fan via reruns. There was no omission of creator, producer, cast, or crew. Illegal Uniform With a very modest budget for the premiere, producers Robert Justman and Herb Solo avoided several standard Hollywood transactions. Rather than using union costumers, they said that they had their costumes made in a sweatshop overnight, evading notice by the crew by smuggling the finished pieces through a rear window of the studio. Is it sneaky or unethical? Spock or One During the pilot's reshoot, Roddenberry was forced to choose between the satanic Spock and Number One, a female protagonist. He got rid of Number One because he thought he could do more with Spock's tale but opted to give Spock her supposed rational but emotional absent demeanor. Suitable for TV? Star Trek had to go through multiple adjustments at the time, particularly when compared to today's television fare, since it was often too controversial. However, censors who pre-ruled the show often overlooked other illusions when hot sequences were judged for inappropriate material. In A Private Little War, a little quantity of clothes and a passionate kiss enabled the authors to insert a Vietnam War illusion into the show without it being detected. Shatner's Odd Requests William Shatner is a guy of great skill and great expectations. One of the original authors, Norman Spinrad, suggested that the captain be given the most words in all episodes, even if it meant sacrificing valuable dialogue for other characters. It's also significant that a September 1966 document said, please note that Leonard's credit is to be no more than 75% of the type that we afford to William Shatner. In other words, Shatner insisted that his name be physically bigger throughout the credits. Writing Struggles Although Roddenberry's sci-fi series had been authorized, he and DeSulu Studios immediately recognized that they needed scripts, and fast. The issue was that relatively few authors, even professional television writers, could understand the science fiction material. As a result, Roddenberry solicited screenplays from sci-fi magazine writers, novelists, and even office personnel. Because there was such a high demand for these scripts, it should come as no surprise that they were expensive. Angry Rewrites Roddenberry had a thirst for sci-fi screenplays and even went so far as to request an episode from the talented Richard Matheson author of I Am Legend, but he had a bad habit of deleting the original copies. It was well known that he would rewrite screenplays, entirely removing disliked and superfluous concepts and elements. Another noteworthy writer of the period was Harlan Ellison, who penned City on the Edge of Forever. As predicted, the plot was dramatically altered and Ellison even demanded a pseudonym for his name during the credits, which was rejected. The Captain and Yeoman Janice Rand in The Enemy Within, the captain is torn into two halves, a decent Kirk and an evil or imposter Kirk. In one scene, the evil version confronts yeoman Janice Rand about her affections with the imposter himself. He tries to make a move, but she manages to flee. Grace Lee Whitney, who portrays yeoman in the episode, had this to say about it. In a badly driven out-of-character moment, Mr. Spock jabs me about my sentiments for the wicked Kirk. Spock has a malicious grin on his face and tells me, The imposter had some very fascinating traits, wouldn't you say, yeoman? My reaction was to disregard the remark, continuing, I can't think of a more cruel and insensitive comment a man could make to a woman who has just gone through such a traumatic event. 
enjoying the cast. Roddenberry was still married to his first wife, Eileen Roddenberry, when the series started production. It was well known around the studio that he was having affairs with both Nigel Barrett and Nichelle Nichols. Barrett and Roddenberry even shared an apartment for the first few weeks of main photography. After his relationship with his first wife ended, he married Barrett, who was dubbed the First Lady of Star Trek. Avoiding the Love Shatner was the series' long-running star, while Leonard Nimoy became the audience favorite. When he was out and about, admirers were always around him. He couldn't manage the public scrutiny, so he started drinking. Binge drinking is quickly becoming a problem. On days off, he started drinking as soon as he got up and didn't stop until the following morning. His co-workers and crew were aware of his addiction, yet he continued to show up to work, ready to film. False Positive Royalties When NBC took up the show, composer Alexander Courage was to be paid royalties every time an episode aired. Unfortunately for him, Courage and Roddenberry agreed that the show's creator would earn half of the profits since he was writing the lyrics for the theme tune. His lyrics, however, were so disjointed and unsingable that they were never utilized. Nonetheless, he received half of his royalties. Sabotage by NBC NBC was very conscious of the importance of ratings. The series was especially expensive to create, and its ratings certainly didn't compensate. When Roddenberry learned that NBC was considering canceling his program, he encouraged viewers to call the network and express their enthusiasm for the science fiction drama. After moving the show to one of the worst time slots available, Fridays at 10 p.m., and slashing the budget by more than 60%, it was believed that the network was planning to cancel the program. Lack of Respect William Shatner did not attend Leonard Nimoy's funeral when he died in 2015. Despite the fact that Spock became the series' favorite character, Shatner finally got over his envy and the couple resumed their relationship. Shatner feels that his documentary, The Captains, which includes Nimoy during a convention, addresses against his objections, was included in the film. The two never talked again after that event. Initially Rejected Before Star Trek, there was The Cage, a pilot that came before Star Trek. Network management believed that the notion and writing could be much beyond the audience's grasp. Furthermore, they said that Spock seemed satanic and that having a female second-in-command would be too much for the viewers to bear, perhaps leading to the cancellation of the program. As a result, creator Gene Roddenberry changed the screenplay, recruited new actors, and modified the program in order for it to be cleared for production.